caffeine. It's basically the substance that runs the Western world. Now, I know you've had your genetic testing done and analyzed, and that's fantastic. It's something that so many people, pretty much anybody, could significantly benefit from. Having your genes analyzed is not just about knowing what your disease risk of certain things is far into the future, but it's also about knowing things like, are you a fast or slow metabolizer of caffeine? That could have certain effects in the long run, but it's also going to affect how you interact with caffeine on a daily basis. So for many people, caffeine can certainly be beneficial, but not everyone is going to react to it in the same way. Um, some people will have a genetic predisposition to being what are called slow caffeine metabolizers. And in your body, that means that caffeine is going to build up. It's not going to get broken down and passed out of the body as fast as it would in somebody who's a, a fast caffeine metabolizer. And when it's hanging around like this for too long, it could end up having a negative effect if you're having too much. So how this happens is that in your liver, you have an enzyme. It's called CYP1A2. You don't need to remember that, but this is the key liver enzyme that is responsible for metabolizing caffeine. It is responsible for uh, deactivating or inactivating about 95% of all caffeine that's coming into the body. And you have variations in a certain gene that is gonna affect how much of this enzyme you're producing and how effectively you can get rid of the caffeine in your body. So you know you're a slow metabolizer of caffeine. So am I. And so that means that too much caffeine is not our friend. Ultimately, you really want to have it in moderation and just even more than moderation, just a very small amount. Um, so I know like for me, having chocolate, I'm just fine. Uh, chocolate has a small amount of caffeine in it. It's mostly a different compound called theobromine that's a stimulant, which of course doesn't stimulate the central nervous system in the same way that caffeine does. I mean, anybody who's had chocolate and coffee will know it's a very different kind of a buzz that you get off coffee. As a no Nobody ever got the coffee buzz from chocolate, uh, unless you kind of stuck some um, coffee beans inside that chocolate bar for a little extra crunch. So if you are a slow metabolizer, you're going to be processing the caffeine at a slower rate and it's going to have longer lasting effects as a stimulant. And so you will be more likely to experience some of the negative side effects associated with caffeine. And this is going to be things like uh, insomnia, anxiety, upset stomach, but there's also potentially some long-term risks. So studies have shown that there is some increased risk of having a, a non-fatal heart attack and or high blood pressure um, in people who are slow metabolizers and have higher amounts of coffee intake. Um, so ultimately, you just really want to keep the coffee and caffeine to a very minimal level. If you know you find the small amount that works for you that you can live with, you know maybe it's just having a maximum one cup a day. Maybe you just have it as a treat a couple times a week, or or maybe you just uh, you know work to to focus on your sleep and and to where you don't need caffeine so much to get you going. I know it's an amazing feeling. I, I understand that. I've uh, experimented at times in my life with caffeine. I actually have another gene that really gives me problems with caffeine. It's something totally different. It's called COMT. Uh, it's a conversation for another time, but it makes me feel spectacular for about eight hours after having coffee. And then for a couple of days after that, I actually feel pretty sad and depressed. So ultimately it's no fun. Now, if somebody else is out there and watching this video and they say, hey, I had my genes tested and I am a fast metabolizer of caffeine. Well, good for you. You're going to be able to have a lot of fun with caffeine because you process it at a faster rate. Um, so it's not going to have as much of an effect actually on you. So you probably would need to drink more to get the same effect as somebody who's a slow metabolizer. And that's, you know, the thing. It's not so bad that you're a slow metabolizer for the person asking the question because you can get the same effect as somebody who's a fast metabolizer without drinking as much. So you shouldn't drink as much, but you also don't need to because you get the effect with a smaller amount. Um, so for people with fast metabolism of caffeine, it's you know easier in some ways because you don't have to worry about a lot of the side effects that could be potentially involved and you can get some of the antioxidant uh, and other um, benefits for heart health, for example, um, that you can get from coffee and caffeine. So. 
This is, you know, it's one amongst a variety of factors that is going to affect how you're feeling in everyday life, but it's great to know your genetics and be able to fine tune your life, your diet, your supplementation according to these genetic factors. So I think it's a great thing that you're asking this question and I hope you'll find that perfect low balance of caffeine for you uh, so you can be feeling great every day for a very, very long time.